Today, we're going to be taking a look at who will be Newcastle United manager. Of course, check out SofaScore in partnership with those guys all through this season. Go and give their app a download. It's where we do all of our analysis. Anyway, let's dive in. Steve Bruce leaves Newcastle United by mutual consent. Big, 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 big types of waves uh, on Tyneside this morning. Uh, he leaves the Magpies after two years in charge, steering the club to 13th and 12th place print, uh, finishes in the Premier League and reaching the quarterfinal stage, both the FA Cup and Carabao Cup in his tenure as manager. But I think the thing with Steve Bruce, obviously, he's, he's had to deal with one of the worst owners in the history of the Premier League in Mike Ashley, uh, you know, not spending cash at all, basically leaving the the entire abuse that was that should have been directed at Ashley going on Steve Bruce as well. But Steve Bruce's football uh, wasn't, wasn't great at times. I think there were moments, there were games where you think, you know, can they go on a run? Can they do it? Uh, but this season in the Premier League, Newcastle have been very, very poor. Uh, currently sitting 19th in the Premier League table. And I think it's, um, it's you know, it's a, it's one of these things where Newcastle's new owners want to be reaching for the Champions League, want to be reaching for league titles. So you can kind of understand why they've done that. Um, in terms of the stats, Steve Bruce won 28.9% of his matches at Newcastle United, the lowest win percentage he's ever had at, in, at a club in, in his entire career. Uh, but if also we look at the underlying stats as well, they aren't looking too good. Um, you know, if we look at the expected goals against, not only this season, um, but last season, it's, it's not looking good for Newcastle United. Uh, that's one thing that they, in fact, do top in the Premier League this season. Newcastle United have the worst expected goals against in the league. They've also got the worst um, in terms of real goals against conceded, uh, goals conceded as well. But if also we flip that to last season, the underlying stats for Newcastle weren't good last season. If we look at the expected goals against from last season, uh, Newcastle United, you know, sitting in the bottom five of the Premier League. But in terms of XG as well, uh, pretty low down the list. So they're not defending well. They're not attacking well under Steve Bruce. And you can kind of understand why Newcastle and Steve Bruce have parted company by mutual uh, consent. But let's talk about the exciting things for Newcastle managers. Newcastle is a club that's got a big fan base and a big potential, hence why the investment has come. Uh, St. James's Park is one of the great grounds in um, England, has a great uh, you know, ability to, to create some big, big noise. But let's take a look at some managers that, have, um, that could be taken over at Newcastle United. First up, uh, Paolo Fonseca, um, Ex Roma uh, was Roma manager um, last season, uh, getting Roma to a little bit deep in the old um, Europa League, crashing out by the hands of uh, Manchester United, um, losing 6 2 at Old Trafford. Uh, Roma that day was so open in the transition. Uh, Paolo Fonseca is a manager that does um, like a 4-2-3-1, but in recent years has moved to a 3-4-2-1 um, formation, as we can see on screen. Two attacking midfielders behind Edin Zeko. You're thinking for maybe Steve Bruce's, uh, oh, sorry, Steve Bruce's Newcastle United. You're thinking for Paolo... You think of a Paolo Fonseca's uh, Newcastle United very much playing with two attacking midfielders uh, behind a striker in a back three. Uh, you know, could be the likes of some Maximum and Almiron behind Callum Wilson. Uh, moving further to other managers that have been linked. Eddie Howe, of course, has been linked. Ex-Bournemouth boss. Uh, hasn't really had a job since losing um, that role. Uh, we're looking at Lucien Favre, um, who used to be Borussia Dortmund manager. Um, so we're looking at his tenure in charge as well. He used to manage Borussia Dortmund, Lucien Favre, uh, but they've kind of changed a few managers since. Steven Gerrard has been heavily, heavily linked. Rangers boss uh, won the SPL for the first time um, in the last sort of like nine years. Um, and they've been performing really well this season in the Scottish Premier League as well. But last season, uh, champions in terms of the, the style of football that Rangers play, kind of focusing on good pressing uh, traps at uh, certain areas, either playing a kind of 4-2-3-1 with a narrow three or a 4-3-2-1 with two kind of narrow attacking midfielders and very much a front three, um, you know, a good pressing style and could be decent for Newcastle, um, you know, going forward. I think last season was more, uh, you know, focused maybe in that that three-man midfielders we can see here, Ryan uh, 
Kent and Camille Roof uh, supporting Morales up front. And we can see by the average positions, kind of the narrowness of that front three. Something quite similar to Liverpool um, with, of course, Jurgen Klopp playing that narrow front three uh, with the, the middle striker kind of dropping off and looking for that reference point in the middle. Fullback, super duper high. Could be an exciting style for uh, Newcastle. Other managers that have been linked, Frank Lampard, uh, of course, ex-Chelsea. In a favour of playing a 4-2-3-1, uh, we've got the likes of Roberto Martinez. We know how his, his Belgium side um, likes to play 3-4-3, three, three, uh, really attack-minded um, situations and setups. Uh, you know, we take the the formation that he, he set the Belgium side up in the European Championships again, that kind of 3-4-3 three, three style. Uh, but the big thing with Martinez, he likes to play attackers in the wing-back positions, which is kind of exciting. More goals, more chances created and all that good stuff. And of course, the, the big one uh, that's been spoke about quite heavily, Ralph Rannick and him taking over um, and bringing the kind of the 4-4-2 vibes to Newcastle. Ralph Rannick, of course, is the type of manager that will set Newcastle up in a way for them to uh, control possession for them to attack, um, but throwing as, you know, maybe going with a two-man strike force and attackers. And I think that's something that Newcastle fans have, have kind of wanted, have, have, have dreamt about playing that attack-minded football. And uh, when we look at some of the players that could be, you know, that could join Newcastle, you know, facing them up with a inner four uh, triple two that Ralph Randnick likes to play. That's kind of the vibe where you could see Newcastle right now uh, setting to that system, getting Ralph Randnick in till the end of the season and allowing him to start to to build the football club. The Ralph Randnick uh, project would be something that would see some exciting football, some pressing football, but a lot of the young players coming through St. James's Park, players that the local fans can get behind. Obviously, in the short term, we're probably looking at maybe a few big signings in a, in a Coutinho in there, but I think in the long term, it will be focusing on you know, players that can play that high pressing game, you know, the likes of Jesse Lingard or maybe Aaron Ramsey playing in these hide wide positions. We know that Almiron works supremely hard on the ball. We're thinking from fullback game, the likes of Max Aaron's in again would fit that model that Ralph Randnick could bring in for Newcastle. And I think that could be the idea, having him as the manager for the first half of the season, uh, well, this this last this first half, uh, the rest of this season, and then bringing a manager in the summer that fits his identity and model in there. I think the exciting side for Newcastle is they are getting linked to a lot of big names. And one of the players that have been linked to Newcastle today, um, which could fit into Ralph Randnick's style uh, massively in terms of how direct they are, I think someone like Yusuf Poulsen at RB Leipzig uh, could be Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Newcastle won a sign, uh, Calvert-Lewin, according to Mike McGrath at The Telegraph. And I think throwing someone like Dominic Calvert-Lewin into this team could make it super, super exciting. Um, when you're looking at the the, the flow of the, the team, the game, uh, getting Calvert-Lewin in a forward position, partnering Callum Wilson, playing two strikers. I think that's what, you know, the Newcastle fans want in a, an attacking sense. They, they want those two strikers up the pitch. That would allow the likes of Almiron to play wide, some maximum to play wide, drifting inside. That would kind of be the perfect model for a, a Ralph Randnick Newcastle United. And for me, you know, looking through and evaluating which manager would fit the best for this Newcastle squad. It's a difficult one because it, it is a bit of a mess of the squad. Mike Ashley hasn't invested in the squad at all. And that's been, you know, real to, to real detriment of the club that there's been some very inconsistent signings. Um, you know, when we look at the the overall signings in the Mike Ashley reign, you know, there hasn't been that many successes. Maybe looking at some maximum as being a big success, Callum Wilson being a relatively big success. But the likes of Joe Linton brought in for a lot of money after, uh, you know, one season where he started to play some really good stuff, but he wasn't quite ready to move. Um, you know, other players that have been brought in haven't quite made it. You know, the likes of Ryan Frazier, uh, Jeff Hendrick, they're all signed on this budget that won't be a problem anymore uh, with the names being linked with Newcastle. I think the defence could be uh, massively sorted. I think the likes of uh, Lascelles could really, you know, be one of the players that will stick at Newcastle, uh, you know, captain um, and a very good football. I think pairing Lascelles with a good back four and a good keeper could really get the best out of him and, you know, help his chances of playing for England. Into midfield, I think they need a massive rejig in there. I like the likes of Joe Willock, Almiron. I think they're two 
uh, really good high octane, high energy players that would fit in the new style of football that we're currently seeing in European football. And then the forward line, uh, Callum Wilson does a very, very good job at Premier League level. So there's no point getting rid of him and St. Maximum there. But I think reinforcements are needed on the right and up front. Uh, and Calvert Lewin could kickstart this revolution after, of course, Steve Bruce has left the club. And that is that, guys. Get into the comments. Who do you think should be the next Newcastle manager? Let me know in the comments below, of course. Check out Sofa Score and also subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you next time.